for watching. New episode here. We are in, or I am in, Lawrence, Kansas right now with John Novosel. Hey, John. Hey, good to see How's you, Brendan. How you doing, man? We're going to be doing a whole bunch of videos together. John has some really revolutionary, interesting techniques for building speed and also building consistency uh, in your golf swing that have just, uh, he only recently started doing social media, but like, it, like I've been aware of John for 10 years or so and uh, really uh, caught my eye, John. So this video is just going to be kind of a, a intro to John and the stuff that he does as we get ready to go out on the course here at uh, we're at the Jayhawk Club in Lawrence. Right? That's right. Special thank you to the Jayhawk Club in West Lynch. This is a, we got a beautiful day and a great facility and yeah. I'm looking forward to getting warmed up. This is where the Jayhawks uh, golf team practices right there and right here where we are. And that's where they do. They have an amazing gym yep. right there. A cool fitness area. We're going to check out, do some stuff in. So, uh, John, tell me a, a little bit about uh, your history in golf so people can, can get to know you and, and kind of the evolution of what's brought you to here. I ah, sure thing. I grew up playing golf. I played some golf in college. Um, after I got out of school, I actually uh, got into long drive before it was uh, super popular like it is now. Kind of this was, you know, 15 years ago. Um, and, it, and, you know, I was telling you back then, 195 ball speed was big. And uh, I've, always, I've been the same size for forever now, about 165 pounds. And so I got into golf, was doing long drive, and all of a sudden realized that, hey, other people want to hit the ball far and started coaching for speed and things like that. And then my dad came out with Tour Tempo. And uh, that book really changed things about how golfers look at tempo in the golf swing. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks they're supposed to swing low and slow and all this. But if you look at tour pros, especially the great players like Rory and Tiger and, and even the old, older guys like Sam Snead and these guys, they're all swinging much faster than we think. So yeah. anyway, um, that's sort of the background. And uh, I, like you said, I just kind of got into social media recently. I've been posting a lot of these cool speed increases I'm getting with my golfers. Yeah, uh, we hear about it all the time, the ratio of three to one. Yeah. It's, it's in almost every golf app. It's, in, it's on every telecast. You know, people are talking about, oh, three parts back, one part down. But this is something that nobody was talking about at all until until your dad saw it on uh, Final Cut Pro, huh? That's right, Final Cut Pro, you know that as uh, being a video guy. And uh, he made that discovery. And it's really, it's a really cool thing to think that, hey, tempo is not this uh, weird, uh, mystical thing. There's actually some science to it. There's some logic to it. There's some math behind it. It's a three to one ratio of backswing to downswing. It's uh, by the way, tour pros from takeaway to impact are very fast and they're also very consistent. And that's what you see with the greatest ball strikers in the world and that have ever lived. And you don't quite see that with the average golfer. You see four to one, five to one, mm -hmm. you see taking 1.3 seconds or more to get to impact. So uh, tour tempo has really helped a lot of golfers by changing the way we look at tempo. Okay, so this was going to be a warm-up video, but now I already have questions we're going to get into. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. a question that I've, I've had with Tour Tempo that I think, how do you know? Cause, because sometimes for golfers, certainly people who are like always trying something different to get mm -hmm. better, how, do, how can you discover, like, hey, what's the best tempo for me? Right. Like, the different things are like 21.7, 24.8, things like that. How can you discover what's the best for me? That is a great question. That's the question we always get. What's the tempo I should be using? Couple different ways to do it. The first way is to film yourself, uh, typically with your phone. I prefer using the Tour Tempo Frame Counter app, a shameless plug, but it is really easy to count your frames in that app and then figure out where you are right now. What's your current frame count? And when I say frame count, I mean how many frames per second do you go back and then how many frames do you come down in? Mm -hmm. if, the, if the ratio is 32 frames back yeah. and eight frames down, yeah. we, use, we like to base that off the denominator, if you will. So we like to base it off the eight, so we, which is your downswing time. You need to get to 24-8, gotcha. right? Does that make sense? So you need yep. to speed up your backswing. Mm -hmm. Here's the good news. If that's you, you can do that in about five swings. It will feel wild and different but you can easily speed up your backswing. You just feel like there's not enough time. You like, feel like yeah, there's right. not enough time. Yeah. That's exactly what you feel like. But here's the hard one. Let's say your tempo is 21.9 or 24.12. Or yeah. You're going 12 down. That one can be a little harder to speed up because sometimes you're coming down so slow because you're casting it. You're creating a bigger moment of inertia and that takes more time to get to impact. Okay. So, um, it, the very first thing to do is get your frame count. Based on that, try to figure out if one of these tempos looks similar. Like I said, that example, 32.8, you would try 24.8 on the Tour Tempo app. Try those tones and see how you do. 
Um, the next little piece of this whole thing is, let's say you get to three to one and you're 24 eight, would you be better at 21 seven like Rory McIlroy or Tiger Woods? Right. And the answer is, I don't know, you have to test it. Right. And like a Tiger 2000 was 24 eight. Correct, very but good. Tiger 2019 is 21 seven. Correct, yeah. exactly. Tiger 2015 was 23 six. Yeah. So he got into this weird stage, but throughout his whole career, he was always three to one until that weird mm -hmm. stage he was in for a number of years. And now he's back to 21 seven. So how great. would you know, like, okay, 24 eight or 21 seven, is that just trial and error? Or? It is trial and error. Yeah. It really is mm -hmm. trial and error, but not necessarily, well, not only on the range, but also on the golf course and whether or not you take the tones with you to the course, or if you just go out to the course, kind of having them, uh, in your head, so to speak. Okay, so we're gonna get a whole, uh, into tempo a whole lot more. Now we're gonna get into warming up for your round of golf, and we have a special guest with us. Oh, there Come he on is, in. Dr. You Rob Jones. You can't yeah, stand on the sideline. The guy is like on jacked. Yeah. Look at him. I know this. Oh, this, is, this, this guy's awesome. trying trying to floss on us here. Yeah. Yeah. You'll never see this guy in sleeves. <laughs> yeah, he does not wear <laughs> sleeves exactly. Yeah. It's because when I when I get up, we, we, we get to see How you. How you doing? Hey, yeah. good to see you. Hey, Dr. Rob, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, it's because I shrink down to normal size when I'm not in the <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, do <laughs> Dr. Rob, who is, hey, hey, Dr. Rob? Yes, yes sir. On Instagram, yes, that's correct. is yeah. one of the foremost experts in keeping a safe and healthy back while you're trying to do athletics and uh, works with a lot of the uh, alumni and players at Kansas. Dr. Rob, we're, talking, we're about to go play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In a real basic way, what's a good way for somebody to to get ready to perform well and protect themselves on the golf course? Well, it's a good question. Um, everybody thinks about the core being, you know, kind of the center of the world, right, as far as athletics. But really, just because I'm not a golfer the way John is, he's really taught me so much about how you want to rotate through the thoracic spine and through the hips. And really, really what I've worked with John on over the years, because he's had some significant back injuries that we've fortunately worked through and yep. he's been great for, for over a decade now since right. he came to me as a patient and we became friends. Really, what the focus for me as a clinician is and what I generally see the breakdown to be is we, t we tend to see too much emphasis on rotation in the lower back. Turn around for a second for me. Yep. So we try to create too much rotation here, yeah. which is the fault. This is designed to be a stable area, and we really want rotation to occur through the thoracic spine and, and to occur through the hips. Right, when I see golfers on their own warming up, uh, you can show us, John, they just put the club kind of behind their back oh, and they man, start doing this twists. This is the classic, hold down their yeah. hips and kind of do this, yep. and, and it's like, what right. is this doing? Well, yeah. so, so we know through science that the spine is in its greatest potential for, for force production and, as well as actually to generate power and safety for the spine mm -hmm. when it's in this neutral position called lordosis. You can actually transfer yeah. energy from the core and the nervous system through the extremities, you know, to perform a, a big powerful golf swing like you guys have. So, so really what we want to do is we want to keep that stable and get rotation through the thoracic spine and the hips. So, so to get to the finally what we need, what, give us, give us the thoracic spine and hip mobility. Absolutely. So, so let me chuck this stuff aside here because yep. I've got some bands too if you need yeah, any. Well, let's all let's just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Yeah. Um, let me steal this club. Here. Yep. So, so really kind of an easy move that you can do is we, we really need to have really good internal rotation of the hip and really good external rotation of the hip. And that's so we have a good ball and socket movement to ensure that you actually have good elasticity and good power production through the glutes because that's where your power comes from with regard to the golf swing, the baseball swing, anything rotational, but specifically for the golf swing. So this is a little move I like to do myself. And it's basically just, it's, it's actually working on your takeaway and your follow through but what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep a He's bit a of lefty. You're, yeah, so I'm going <laughs> okay. backwards like John here, but you want to keep a bit of an abdominal brace. Mm -hmm. and So there's some tension in just your Just some tension. Belly. And, and yep. the mistake that's made pretty commonly is people will actually suck their belly button back. It's actually in, improper information. You actually want to tension like you're being, like About you're actually being punched. Punch, yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. So you tension that right through your core here. And really what you want to think about is if you're wearing a belt, take your belt buckle to your left hip. Oh, and okay. as you spin this way, you're actually getting some thoracic motion, but you're re getting really good internal ro rotation of the hip. Now the propensity is here for the foot to come up. We want to keep the big toe down. Once you start to feel a stretch through here, move back here a little bit so you can see better. Once we feel a stretch through here, we're going to actually shift the weight back into the heel of that, of that my left side here. So my big toe stays on the ground, get a nice big stretch out of it. And then we come around to the other side. So we're doing it kind of slow motion, like, like yeah. you're doing. And then, yeah, I'm yeah. just going to demonstrate it really quick, and then, I'll, and then I'll go through the actual motion. So then we're going to rotate into 
the right hip. So we're gonna go belt buckle or belly button towards the right hip. Okay, so we're getting a nice kind of stretch in the deep hip rotators and the glutes. Then we're gonna shift the weight back to the heel, bigger stretch. And there's your feeling now. We just cadence it where we go one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, okay. One, two, three, one, two, three. So how, how would how would you tell how would you think that golfers might get this wrong when they go to do it on, on their, so, their so, own? So what the first the first mistake you're gonna see is you're gonna see actually let's even go to the number one default is yeah. too much flexion. Yeah. The average yeah. person sits so much so we get too rounded here. Yeah. So what we want to try to do is keep chest up mm -hmm. and we want to actually push the hips back just like uh -huh. that. So that's we're a big cue is yeah. that because everybody yeah. gets this way, right? They get yeah. the humped in. Yeah. And, then they they get the and then they drop that chest down. So basically yeah. if, if we go hips back, we'll keep lordosis. Yeah. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to cue John to basically pull his belt buckle towards his hip. And again, that tendency is going to be for this to come up. So we want to really cue big toe down. I feel now, that right. Yeah, yeah. Now, once you feel that stretch in your deep mm -hmm. hip rotators, what we're going to do is we're just going to push the weight back into the heel a little bit. And you're going to get a nice elongation in the glutes and deep hip rotators. Mm -hmm. Hold it for about a three count, and then we're going to rotate into the other side. And again, if you, if you think about that from a rotational standpoint, so after, you know, I would think maybe 10 reps per side yeah. until the individual uh -huh. feels warmed up. Now, John, go into your go into your takeaway on your swing mm -hmm. and just just really watch the application here right so John's gonna go into his takeaway take that club all the way back and there you go yeah. So he's already in that position yeah so without proper stretch through your deep hip rotators and glutes basically what's gonna happen is the average golfer is gonna stay tight here because they're sitting all day long right. at their desk job they're not gonna be able to move through the hip and then what's gonna have to happen is they're gonna have to rotate through the lumbar spine or they'll just stand up or they'll just stand up yeah. and then or they'll just yeah right exactly so you, you get back injury from that and of course you you have less effect on on your golf swing all right cool right and then the the one more for the thoracic spine is if we just do some simple thoracic rotation just so, on, the, on all fours yeah so we yeah. can we can basically just get down into this position yep and go elbows in front of your knees just like this mm -hmm. uh -huh. grab your neck and the mistake people will make here is they'll try to chicken wing your arm <laughs> up you actually want to keep your forearm close to your to your cheek and make sure your nose and elbow are pointing as one unit and you can see here, my lumbar spine's locked down, but I'm just getting nice thoracic rotation. Yeah. So you would basically go, you know, 10 or 12 reps per mm -hmm. side, one or two sets, two or three sets, until you feel like you've loosened up. And then again, John, go into your, go into your backswing. And he wants to get warmed up first, so he doesn't want to Well, he, he's, this is a legitimate warm-up for John. <laughs> this isn't, isn't just for the camera. Right. We're actually playing in a minute I need here. This. We're going to yeah. Hit. So the mistake that you see here sometimes is you'll see this come up like that, and that won't do you any good because then you're just getting shoulder movement. Yeah, so you right. really want to keep your forearm pinned to your, to mm -hmm. your cheek, basically. And, and, and same thing, you keep some tension yeah, in your keep stomach? Keep some tension in your core because you don't want to over-rotate the lumbar spine. So you just want to move. You can see he's getting great rotation through his mid-thoracic there, which is super important for that turn when you're in your takeaway. Okay. So. I love both those. Those are great. I, especially, there was something I really felt when I did this one um, that I don't think people get, and that's that I coach that all the time for speed and power. If you don't load this hip, you can't create power. Mm -hmm. All sports where you do an inch, you know, if you if you propel an instrument of some mm -hmm. sort, mm -hmm. this has to be loaded. Okay. And people kind of do weird stuff the way they load this hip, but like if I'm doing a shot put, it's a complete load Absolutely. of this thing yep. to do that. So yeah. if you that one's it. really important to, to load it and then give it a little, I like that move, stretch it back. Absolutely. Because what do most people do in their swing? They're always this way, right? Very few people like do this. Yeah, so really the idea is it, it, it's called eccentric loading. So when, you, when you're in your takeaway and you get into that position, basically what you're doing is you're putting a stretch on that gluteal muscle, which is such a power generator. It's literally like taking a rubber band or a slingshot or a bow and arrow and just stretching it, bang, and you let it go and massive force production. All right, let's see it. John, hit a couple balls for oh, okay. us as, as we get ready here. All right. Have you been getting to play much recently? Uh, that would be a negative. No. <laughs> <laughs> Between tour tempo and uh, I've asked that question kids. to a lot of people and I've never gotten a now, never got a yeah actually yeah, no, playing just, a lot recently <laughs> because I am due to my age I got to start kind of slow so I kind of hit these smaller swings yeah I like that um because I really what club is that this little nine iron uh -huh. um are you trying to hit it like flight it a little bit yeah I'm trying yeah. to just keep I'm just trying to feel from like in here to in here mm -hmm. just to you real like connected kind of like i liked how you warmed up yeah. you were really feeling solid through here because if you don't get this through here in the warm-up you're never going to get it as you get build faster. up the speed yeah. yeah yeah as you go faster the other thing real quick 
and I'm, I'm not doing this to show off my products, I just need to do a few of these, is I like to load up with this thing because it takes what we just did with Rob and I put some speed into it. So I'm gonna try to pop this going back and you'll notice yeah. I get some tension there. When it comes to but amateur- I do it through the hip. Right, yeah. when it comes to amateur golfers, uh, hold on to that, that uh, uh, what's the name of that? This is the lag popper. The lag popper. Yeah. Uh, percentage wise of amateur golfers you you see who uh, of the percentage wise who has like is the percentage of golfers that are swinging too slow on the backswing oh man 60 to 70 okay most i would say yeah 60 percent. yeah okay. too slow yeah rob mm -hmm. was one of them yeah and within you know rob will tell you within a few swings we got him swinging faster he was hitting better but most golfers way too slow one thing nice about the leg popper is if you do this slow See how late that was and how soft it was? Yeah. Whereas if I create some speed by loading the hip, it really pops. Yeah. So what I'll do is a few of these, I'll land it and then kind of yeah. pop it through, get to here, and then work on that. The other thing I'll do with this for a warm up, you'll like, I don't know if I've showed you this. So this is a, sort of a thoracic move. Yeah. So I'm just gonna take my backswing to here, get a little bit of a land, and then open up this spiral line of fascia. Mm, yeah. And when I go mm -hmm. both ways, it's really prepping the body to, to move, go this way. Mm -hmm. Kind of the, the walk-off drill there. Yeah, it is, yeah. it is. But if you want, I mean, Rob, walk watch off this. Walk-off home run, I mean, yeah. yeah. Watch this spiral, yeah, right? Absolutely. Going through all there. Right, yeah, right so now I'm creating right a little wrist. more movement and motion to create more speed. The crazy thing I've got lately is I don't hit a lot of irons. I've mainly been working on speed. Mm -hmm. And so hitting an iron is, uh, it's a little bit different. <laughs> a little bit risky to your reputation. It is, honest. it is very risky for sure. <laughs> oh, that's great, good shot. But see that one, I got more follow through. Mm -hmm. It was just, and it, it didn't happen because I thought about it or whatever, it was because I was warmed up yeah. from doing those. So um, there's your little warm up out of breath. <laughs> All right, guys, so stay tuned, hit the subscribe button. We're gonna be doing some videos out on the course where you'll, where you'll see more and then a bunch of videos on really building your speed. So you're gonna to wanna to see all those videos. If you're interested in any of these uh, interesting products, that's one of about like four or five that John has that is really the reason I came out here because they look so cool and fun to play with. Uh, go to tourtempo.com and enter the promo code BeBetterGolf. Yeah, right? Yep, that's it. And yep. the promo code BeBetterGolf and there's a discount for BeBetterGolfers on anything they sell there that I've organized for you guys. See you later, bye.